so much. Thank you. How much is it? Uh, here. Uh, 50 instead of 100. Thank you so much. Thank you. So humbly, you know, it, 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 he observed these reckonings of the soul, whether it's a marriage or a child, they always seem to happen in your pajamas at two o'clock. In the morning, you look over at the neighbors like it's going down. Just, somebody, somebody's on the lawn in their pajamas with a, you know, with a bloody nose. What is happening? You know, and it was really beautiful because my son got to play the nosy kid next door, Bob, you know, being very protective. He says, you know, get out of here. You know, get out of here with that camera. You know, leave my son alone. He says, don't worry. Don't let people talk about it. He's very protective. You know? And I know what that's like. I've lived through that with all the schools and everywhere you go in a restaurant, anywhere you want to be protected. It was beautiful for my son to be the guy. Who had to be you know, this guy? You know, he, had to, he had to be the other guy. And I just want to tell a very funny story. Is that the, uh, one of his big scenes when Mr. De Niro chased him, which we just saw um, in the middle of his bipolar episode with Bradley Bailey. It's such a stellar performance, an amazing performance. We're having a breakdown of uh, missing his wife. Anyway, Matthew takes the door off, and De Niro chases him in his pajamas. And the first day, Matthew just like, starts laughing hysterically. And I said, what are you doing? This is serious, you know? And he said, he said, he said oh my God, it's like I was in a raging bull. <laughs> because he doesn't tell you what he's going to do. He's so in the moment. You know, tell that scene you saw where he cried? That was not scripted, that was not directed, I never asked for it, I never even had a conversation about it. We were just so grateful. You asked him if he was intimidated to work with him, he said no, he's comfortable. I was very intimidated to work with him, you know, because I just had so much respect for the man, and he set the tone for the whole set. But he just did it, and we were shocked, we were going back to the so, you know, we asked him to do it one or two more times, you know. And he did. Him, and I said, you can't do that. You know what I'm saying? He said, but it's a, like I'm a raging boy. It's freaking me out. And eventually he said, you know what? It's real. A kid, a teenage kid, if a grown man with a bloody nose in his pajamas was pushing him, you know, might start to laugh nervously. So let's play it. And that became a very beautiful moment in the film, which says, I'm going to come back here. I'm going to break that camera over your head. Then I'm going to come back and interview what it's like to have that camera broken. <laughs> what are you laughing at? I'm sorry. Yeah, he immediately realizes that he's out of control, but he gets to say, what are you laughing at? And so he used it, you know, as he taught us all. He taught us all. Did, did, did you feel a, a greater responsibility, Bob, doing a, a film that, that David had so much personally invested in? Oh, of course. I mean, um, uh, I understand what he put that showed him the screenplay in his home, you know, we all know people who face these challenges, and we've all been touched by these people, and we love these people, you know, and, and uh, as he says in the movie, I, I'll do, I want to do everything I can to help you get back on your feet, and there's nothing harder in life than when you can't, you can't figure out what to do, you try everything, and you, and you, and you must never stop, you know, your heart just has to keep growing. When I first was in his apartment, and I was talking about the screenplay, this is what happened. And I thought he was having hay fever, and I realized, and I realized he was having an emotional reaction. I sat there and I watched Robert De Niro cry for 10 minutes, and I said, wow, he's really connecting with this material, and this would be a beautiful thing if it could work out, because I think his heart would be there, and it, it is there. Well, you know, I think one of the reasons the movie is so powerful is clearly because of what we're seeing here today, and how much you all were affected by that. Um, David, the reason I said to David, let him laugh, I said, let him laugh because I understood what that was. Let him laugh, that's what he would do. And it's his nervous reaction to someone behaving the way I was. So, 
Well, it takes experience to understand that and to bring that to the table as well. And, you know, I think one of the many things this movie is doing is it's, it's opening a window into how mental illness is seen and, and treated and perceived in this country so we can all talk about it finally. We're going to do that along with former Congressman Patrick Kennedy right after this.